Hi everyone! I hope you've been well. We're going to do a Mother's Day project today together. And actually for my mom, I'm making her the giant banana split pillow out of my book for Mother's Day. She was in my house one day and she saw it and she's like, I want that. <laughs> but I was still writing my book and shooting photos so I couldn't give her that one. And also, I was really running out of time while I was writing my book, so a lot of those pieces were hot glued together just so I could get it finished and shoot a photo of it. So I'm going to start over and make her a new one that's actually sewn together properly. But I'm not doing a tutorial for that because the book is new and I'm still promoting it and I'm still trying to get people to buy copies of it. So for me to give away the pattern for free in a YouTube tutorial wouldn't make a lot of sense. But if you guys want to vote on one project from the book that you guys would like me to do a video for, I am totally all about that and I'm totally open to hearing which one project you would like a video for. I did a loose poll for that on Facebook maybe like a month ago and a lot of people wanted to see the corn dog pen cozy and I have seen a couple of your guys' corn dog pen cozies and the top sometimes looks a little funky and I know the pattern might be a little confusing so to me that seems to be one of the uh, front runners for video but if you have other patterns that you'd rather see instead you can let me know. What we're going to do today, um, I've mentioned this project before, is a chain link scarf and it's not a totally new or creative or innovative idea but this is the scarf that I wear almost every day. Like it's still pretty gloomy here in San Francisco. I just walked the dogs and I'm all allergy-y and it was windy um, so I definitely still need a scarf here. I don't know about the climate where you are but I still feel like giving someone a scarf is a nice gesture as a present. It keeps them cozy and they think of you when they wear it so whether it's for your mom or your BFF or your BF or your GF, whomever, I mean depending on who the person is and what colors you use this can be a very gender neutral project as well so it kind of surprises me that of all the scarves that i wear in my life like this is the one that kind of garners the most reaction and people are always asking me oh did you make that that's really cute i actually bought it years and years ago at this little store in downtown disney i think it might be called mismatched it's very colorful and it's for little kids and I can only buy the socks and the accessories there because I'm too big to fit and everything else. So I got this scarf there. It was on sale. It was like 10 bucks. It's obviously machine knit and it's getting kind of old and scraggly looking. It's getting that balliness. At some point I know I'm going to need to retire it but I really like it. It's just it's easy. I don't care if it gets beat up. It's really my go-to scarf even though I know I should be wearing some of my own designs because I'm a business person and I should be doing that. But yeah, whatever. Sometimes you just want to put on something easy and not think about it. This is what we're making today. When I was at my book signing on Monday, it was at my favorite yarn store in San Francisco, Imagine It. And I was there hanging out for a couple of hours and obviously I'm going to get my shop on. I didn't plan on buying a lot of yarn. But then I had this project with you guys in mind, and so I was like, oh, I'm in a yarn store, I'm going to buy some yarn. So what I wanted to do was buy, like, chunky, super chunky, bulky yarn so we can use big yarn, big stitches, and the project will, will work up big and chunky and quickly, which can be key for last minute gift, uh, gift crocheting. So I honed in on this fun yarn. I think it's considered a bulky weight. This brand is Madeline Tosh. I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm not sure. Y'all can correct me if that's wrong. Um, the line is called Home. It's 100 Superwash Merino Wool. And I don't buy or use a lot of wool because I find it very scratchy against my skin. But if it's a high quality merino wool, it'll still feel really soft. So I felt okay about buying it. This colorway is called the Radness. I wanted to buy one yarn that had a bunch of different colors in it and then I wanted to buy a bunch of other solid yarns to kind of accompany it. So this is also Madeline Tosh, but this is a different line. It's called ASAP. It's still 100% superwash merino wool, but it's wound a little bit more tightly um, so it feels like it's actually thinner. So they're not the exact same weight, but I'm going to just use the same hook size. I'm going to use an M, a pretty big hook, an M hook. See what happens. I think if some links are slightly bigger than other links, it's not going to be a big deal. I think it's just, eventually I think it'll all look good in the end. And this is all speculation. I have not made this yet. I just bought this yarn two days ago. So 
we'll see what happens. I also bought this yarn, which I started winding into a ball. It's the same line as this one. It's Madeline Tosh Home. And this colorway was called Beach Bonfire. And I'm also going to throw in this patterned yarn in black and white. This is less expensive. It's Lion Brand Country, and this colorway is White Mountains. And this is a number six super bulky. And I'll probably pull some yarn from my stash because I want to get some yellow or orange in there too. Even if I don't have a bulky or a super bulky, I can always also try double stranding to try to get to that bulky thickness, or I'm just gonna see what happens when I use an M hook with worsted weight yarn. It doesn't matter, who cares, it's an experiment. I just think that the more color and texture you incorporate into a project like this, like the cooler and the funkier it looks. But again, this is all just guessing, I don't know. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Get some thick yarn, a big old hook, I'm using an M hook, scissors, tapestry needle, and that's all you need. I don't know yet how much yarn you're gonna need. It also depends on how you want your scarf to look. Like this one is really long and I wrap it around myself three times. I think I tried to measure, ugh, I'm getting all tingle in it. Ooh, I measured it like this. <laughs> like from, from like hand to hand, it's like this. And I think for me that was about 55 or 56 inches. So then double, that's about 110, 112 inches. If you want more or less, just fit it to yourself as you go. It's not a big deal. We're just gonna make one tube basically and sew the ends of the tube together to make one link, and then make another tube, and sew its ends together to make the second link, and so on. So the length of it is very flexible. It can be whatever you want, and you don't even have to decide immediately. You can decide along the way. The other thing I wanted to talk to you guys about really quick is how to get from this to this, <laughs> because you cannot just crochet from a hank of yarn. You guys can fast forward to the pattern if you're already familiar with how to wind a ball of yarn, but if this is new to you, then keep watching. So a lot of times when you buy yarn at the fancier yarn boutiques, it comes in what we call a hank. And this hank of yarn is basically a big circle of yarn like this. If you try to find the end of the yarn and just work from it, this circle of yarn is just gonna turn into a big old knot. So you really need to wind it into a ball. And sometimes when you're at the store, they'll offer to wind it into a ball for you for free, or they'll have a ball winder and a swift there for you to use and they'll show you how to use it and you can wind your own balls. But let's just say like you bought your yarn online and there wasn't an offer to have it shipped as a ball and you want to learn how to ball it, you can totally do it at home. I have a ball winder and a wall mounted swift, but I have run out of room on my wall <laughs> since I moved my yarn room into my dining room. So my Swift right now is in my garage. So when I have this, I actually just use my body. That sounds really weird. You can just use your knees and your hands and you can wind a hank of yarn into a ball. Okay, we actually just hopped to later this evening because I actually wanted to reshoot showing you guys how to turn this hank into this ball. Just because the first time I did it, I wound the yarn around um, this label, like a piece of cardboard, and I let it kind of get sucked into the center of the ball, and I don't know, it just, it became a, I mean, it, it, it worked out in the end, and it would have been fine, like, the ball of yarn is fine, but I just felt like if I was showing you the technique and objects were getting hidden inside the ball of yarn, that it was just kind of a weird tutorial, so starting fresh, even though it's like six hours later, but whatever. So you have your hank of yarn, and you just want to remove any packaging or labels, like this, and you just pull it apart gently to unwind it, and you can see how it's this circle of yarn. I'm going to use my knees, so I'm going to kind of draw them up on the chair here in a very unladylike fashion just so you can see what's happening and I'm gonna lay this yarn around my knees like this I feel like I'm about to teach you guys a Lamaze class or something take these skinnier strings that have just been 
holding your yarn in place. You don't need them. Usually there's only two, but Madeline Tosh really likes to secure their yarn. Make sure you're not cutting any of your actual yarn because that would not be good. Okay. And this last one actually has the ends of my real yarn. You can see the ends are usually tied in a knot and I usually just cut that knot to release the yarn ends. You don't need your scissors anymore. Okay, so to choose which end you're gonna wind, try to find the end. Sorry, there's a lot of fiber and it's like getting up my nose. Try to choose the end that's traveling along the outside edge of this loop because if you're winding the yarn and it's being fed through like the inside of your legs, there's just too much rubbing against your legs. You just want this outside yarn to be free. So I feel like this end is the inside. So I'm just gonna drop that in the middle and not touch it. Where'd the other one go? Here's the other one. Yeah, this feels much easier to pull. Okay, you want things to be easy. So how you start is, I'm gonna just use my thumb. And as I referenced earlier, some people will use a piece of cardboard or like a used toilet paper roll, like just the core of the toilet paper roll. I've always just used my thumb. The downside of using your thumb is once you start, you can't get up to like get a snack or go to the bathroom because you're gonna have a ball of yarn on your thumb but it's not gonna take that long. This is only like 110 yards also, so it's not gonna take a very long time. So this is going to create a center pull ball, and we're starting at the center. So this yarn tail is what you're going to be using from the center of the yarn ball when you're crocheting. So you always wanna make sure that this is free, that it never gets sucked inside the ball of yarn that you're winding. And that's basically the number one thing, is protect this yarn tail. Other than that, just take your thumb and just start winding. And that's basically all. You want to not wind too tightly. You want to keep it pretty loose so that it's easy to pull the yarn out of the ball. Especially in the beginning. So just keep it relaxed. You know, keep changing the direction that you're winding so that the ball of your yarn stays pretty even and balanced. It doesn't have to be beautiful, like no one cares. What I would say to avoid, which might be obvious, but sometimes it's nice to restate the obvious. Avoid just winding the yarn around the base of your thumb like this. Because once you take your thumb out, all that yarn is just going to fall off. So you kind of want to just keep crisscrossing around the ball like this and this way. Just don't wrap around and around the bottom of it. And if you're just at home, you don't have to draw your knees up on the chair like this. Again, I'm just doing that so you can see what's happening. You can just sit at the edge of your couch and you'll still be able to loop the yarn around your knees with no problem. And then just like put on one of your favorite TV shows and you can just sit there winding your balls of yarn and the time will pass. And it does kind of feel like a slight upper body workout. I can feel it especially in my shoulders. <laughs> or sometimes it feels like my yarn tail is getting sucked in. So just my thumb is still in the center of this and I try to hold on to that yarn tail with my other fingers here. And if this is too long, just cut it. Just make sure there's enough for you to hold on to. Also when you're doing this at home, you're not gonna have to hold this. Your arms won't be this high. Um, I'm just doing it because of this weird way that I'm sitting so that you guys can see everything. So it also won't be as like weird looking and strenuous when you guys are doing it by yourselves. All you have to do, sorry that's so blown out, is tuck this. It'll pop out eventually, it just happens. Just tuck it in for now and you can remove your thumb. And you can see how you've just made a very glorious and easy center pull ball. I'm going to ball up my other yarn and then we can get started on the actual pattern. And also the pattern will be really easy for you to modify if you want. 
thicker loops or skinnier loops or longer loops or shorter loops. So I'm just going to show you what I'm doing, but it's very flexible and essentially you can do whatever you want. So greatest pattern ever, right? Do whatever you want. <laughs> it's just guidance. It's inspiration. I'm, I'm kind of feeling these projects that are sort of more inspiration rather than like follow this pattern to a T. So let's get started. Using a new desk lamp and a different lens to shoot tonight. So I don't know what this is going to end up looking like. Probably the same. Um, so I have this multicolored yarn, which I'm thinking of as my main yarn. I'll probably use it in more lengths than other colors. And then this M hook, which is a pretty big hook. It's a lot bigger than we normally use. And I'm going to put a slip knot onto my hook. And then you're just going to start chaining. I'm going to chain nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And you can kind of eyeball it. You're going to eventually join the beginning and the end here. This is going to be the width of your tube. I'm gonna grab my other scarf here. You can see how yucky it's getting. And kind of compare the width here. I think that's pretty close. I mean, it doesn't have to match exactly, but I always really liked the look of my old scarf. So I'm just using that as a template, basically. So this is nine chains. If you wanna do eight, or if you wanna do 10, or even 12 for bigger chain links, that's totally up to you. This is a really flexible project and you can basically do whatever the heck you want. So I'm going to stick with nine. And so making sure there are no twists in your chain, you're going to slip stitch to the first chain that you worked. So insert your hook into the first chain here. And to slip stitch, you just yarn over and pull through both loops. Most of this project is going to be worked in double crochet. However, I'm going to start with some shorter stitches because we're going to work in a continuous spiral. And if we start right away with a tall stitch, when we come back around, we'll have to like leap up to work on top of that tall stitch. So to make a smoother transition, when we start the second round, we're just going to work shorter stitches first. So to work a single crochet, Insert your hook into this first stitch, yarn over and pull through one loop, yarn over and pull through two loops. That's one double crochet. In the next chain, I'm going to work one half double crochet. Half double crochet is yarn over, insert your hook into the desired stitch or chain, yarn over and pull through one, yarn over and pull through all three. That's one half double crochet. In this next stitch, we're going to start our double crochets. So yarn over, insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over and pull through one, yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. And you can see the stitches we've worked slowly get taller and taller. And from here on out, until I tell you, it's just working double crochets into the next stitch. So for this round one, you're going to have, or I'm going to have, one single crochet, one half double crochet, and seven double crochets for a total of nine stitches because I started with nine chains. You may have more or less depending on how thick you wanted this chain link to be. Oops, my yarn is caught. <laughs> so I've worked all the way around Oh, actually, I think I have, I have one more. One more stitch to work. Sorry about that. It was a little hard to see in the beginning. You can double check your work by counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I'm good. I'm gonna pull out that beginning tail so it's out of my way. We're gonna start round two now. This is that first single crochet that we worked in the beginning. And you can see, since it's nice and low and short, when we start round two, there won't be like a weird 
stair-stepping leap that we have to make. So I'm just going to keep double crocheting into that single crochet. I'm going to work a double crochet into that half double crochet. And I'm going to keep just working double crochet in every stitch all the way around pretty much until the very end of this tube. How long you make this tube, again, entirely up to you. Just depends on how long you want your chain link to be. I don't really know how long I want mine yet. I will probably use my old scarf as a reference. So I'm just going to keep working one double crochet in each stitch all the way around and around and around. And when I get to a length that I like, I will pop back in with you guys. Oh, actually I wanted to talk to you about right side and wrong side in case that is new to you guys. Um, so the right side of your work has the abbreviation RS and the wrong side of your work has the abbreviation WS. Um, and it's pretty, it's pretty self-explanatory. The right side is the side of your work that's facing you while you're working. So that would be this side. And the wrong side is the side that's facing away from you or the back of your work. That's the wrong side. And you've probably noticed in most of my three-dimensional work or work where I want a certain side to be the correct side, I always put the right side of my work on the outside of my projects. And for me, that's aesthetics and I just like the look of the right side of my stitch. Depending on the pattern, whether you have the right side or the wrong side facing can affect the shape of the project. So like with certain stuffed toys or amigurumi, if you don't pay attention to what the pattern calls out, your animal or whatever might be a different shape than was intended. Um, it might be longer and skinnier instead of shorter and rounder. Little things like that. Like it won't look completely bad, but it just might not be exactly the way the pattern writer had intended. So keep an eye out for that in patterns. If no one calls out anything, maybe it doesn't matter. Um, if you can start getting used to what stitches look like, you can see if there's a photo, what that pattern writer preferred to have showing on the outside of the work. So again, this is the right side showing on the outside. And when making tubes like this, people sometimes find having the wrong side on the outside is easier for them to crochet. And if that's easier for you, that's totally fine. In this project, since it's just one straight tube, it's not going to affect the shaping at all. It's just depending on how you want the stitches to look. Okay, so my tube is looking like this and I stopped and kind of folded it like this to turn it into a chain link. Um, actually, oh, it's a pretty good size. I might pull out a little bit. It's looking a little too long for me. Just gauge it as you go, folding this in on itself to see. I like the look of that chain link, I think. Remember too, um, there's gonna be the thickness of another link going through here and another link going through here. So you don't want this to be too short or everything will start scrunching together. Maybe I regret pulling that out now. <laughs> it is looking a little short. Maybe I'll add that back in. So I'm just gonna add a few stitches back in Maybe I'll just add in four more, kind of a, a middle ground. That's two, that's three, and that's four. What I'm going to do is I'm going to measure this. Ugh, that M hook is so loud. I'm going to measure the length of this so that my other chain links will be consistent. I mean, I, you could always just eyeball it the whole way, but uh, at least for reference, I like to measure. So this is like a smidge, like just about nine inches, like a smidge under nine inches long. And just for reference, if you wanted to compare yours to mine, this is a smidge under two inches wide. 
To finish up this first tube, we're going to start working in descending sized stitches again to round off this edge so you're not just like left with this weird tall stitch. So I'm going to half double crochet into the next stitch, single crochet into the next stitch, and then slip stitch into the next stitch. I'm going to break off leaving enough yarn for me to sew one end to the other. Maybe like 12 to 18 inches. Maybe 18 just to be safe. And then to break off, just yarn over one more time and pull the yarn tail all the way through. Sorry, I need like a stand for that hook so it doesn't roll around on my table. So you're going to get your tapestry needle and string the long yarn tail on it. And if you want, if you feel comfortable using pins, you can use pins. I, this is so small that I don't feel like I need to use pins. So you're just basically sewing the last end to the first end. Kind of line them up like this and I just start stitching. I'm just going to use whip stitches. However you sew these together, not a big deal. Do whatever is easy for you. As long as you get a tube shape at the end, you did it right. <laughs> That little yarn tail is really getting in my way. You can always sew that, weave that in first. I might just stuff that inside one of the tubes there. No one will ever know. It's not going to come out. And it's one less thing for me to have to sew in. One more stitch. And I'm just going to tie a small knot to secure this yarn tail. Some people I know are anti-tying knots in work because it can ruin yarn or the knot might feel uncomfortable, but I do not trust just weaving in a yarn end like I just feel like oh if that tail comes out all your work is going to unravel so whether you tie a knot is actually up to you but I have read um, a lot of patterns or websites where they teach you to not ever tie a knot and since I sell a lot of my work I just didn't feel comfortable selling work that had no knot to secure anything so I'm very into knots whether or not <laughs> whether or not you are, that's going to be something that you can decide for yourself too. Snip that. So the first link in my chain is done. I'm going to pick up a second color and work that same tube and then we'll just show you how to connect the two together. It's really easy. I think you can see where this is going. But for the sake of the tutorial, I will show you. I finished my second tube and before sewing it together, I'm going to bring in my first tube. So I'm going to get this yarn tail onto my tapestry needle and then pick up chain link number one. And all I have to do is loop chain link number two around chain link number one. And then you can go ahead and sew the ends of chain link two together. You're just going to keep doing that around and around and around and around 
alternating your yarn colors until you get to the very end. So I have my second link in my chain done and I'm going to work on the third and just keep on going until we're at the very end. I've worked quite a few links already. Sort of pass it under the camera here. Um, I found this fairly bulky yellow yarn, which is, um, did I show it to you guys in the intro? It's Lion Brand Hometown USA. Um, it's really the thickest yarn that I've used so far. So actually this is only seven inches or this is only seven stitches around. So I started with a chain seven and when I used this really cool black and white yarn, it also ended up being thicker than my main yarn, which was the Madeline Tosh. Um, so this is only eight stitches around and I started with eight chains. This is a really cool hand spun, hand dyed yarn, hand spun, hand dyed yarn from an Etsy shop called the Ginkgo Leaf. And I bought this years and years ago. It's gorgeous and I just never wanted to waste it. Um, so I've just been hoarding it and I just like looking at it cause you know, it's rainbows. Uh, but I figured for a project like this, I could just put in a couple links to add a pop of that color um, and actually use some of my really cool yarn stash. And for this, um, it's slightly thicker than the Madeline Tosh, so I ended up also going um, eight stitches around, eight chains. But I wanted to use this yarn to show you something that I discovered while working. Sometimes it happens. Um, let me find the end of this yarn. And this yarn is a good color to show you guys some stitch things that I want to talk about because the changing color will help you see the different stitches. What I ended up doing was, actually I'm going to bring the scarf back, um, when I was sewing the tubes together, I was finding that the join, it was just a little stretchy and gappy for my liking. I don't know if you can see, like this area here is what I'm talking about. And I just felt like it was gappy and kind of pulling on this loop here. This is my whip stitching. And this is the foundation chain from where we started the tube. Um, and it's not a big deal. It's not like it's gonna fall apart or ruin the yarn, but it just sort of bothered me. <laughs> it's like just to keep seeing those loops stretch out bothered me. So there's nothing wrong with the way we already started the chain links, but in case you wanted to see what I ended up doing, I will show you because I think it really helped tighten up that join. Let me see. I think this is one. You can kind of see this is where the slip stitching is and it's just it's not as gappy. I don't know. The The distance is very slight so whether or not you change how you want to work is up to you but I thought I would show you there are options and there are more than there's always more than one way to attack a certain part of the project. So I'm going to start again by putting a slip knot on my hook and I'm going to chain eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. I'm going to slip stitch to the first chain to form this ring. And when I start with my first single crochet, I'm not going to pick up just one loop of the chain. I'm going to pick up two. So, so you, I have two separate loops on my chain. I mean, on my hook. Sorry. Yarn over and pull through one. Yarn over and pull through two for the single crochet. And in this entire foundation chain, I'm going to work in two loops of the chain. That's my half double crochet. Here's my double crochet. Just keep working around and double crochet again. I'm going to keep working in both loops of my foundation chain. So make sure you've got two loops on your hook. Keep doing that. The last one, 
This eighth one can look a little weird, but just as long as you have one loop and just find some other loop to stick your hook in, like this one, that's the last double crochet of round one. Going to keep working in double crochet, just like I did before, and I'm going to make this tube again about nine inches long. That's really the only difference in how I start my tubes now, is by working in two loops of each chain rather than just one. And that means I have one loop here that you might think you just want to sew in that when you're whip stitching the ends together, but to me that would create a pull and a gap too. So what I actually do is I make sure when I'm sewing at the end, I grab two of these loops and I just feel like there's some interlocking thing that happens and everything just looks a little neater to me, a little less holy and gappy and stretchy. So I'm gonna finish this tube or this chain link and then I'll show you uh, me sewing it together. I'm measuring my tube now to make sure it's just a smidge under nine inches and before breaking off I'm going to work one more half double crochet in the next stitch and then a double crochet in the following stitch and then a slip stitch in the next stitch and then I'm going to give myself 12 to 18 inches of yarn for sewing and then I'll show you sewing this tube together. <laughs> What's wrong with me right now? I can't seem to get any words out of my mouth. Okay. Stringing this tail on my tapestry needle. I'm looping my new chain link through the previous chain link to sew these ends together. I kind of put my tail at a point where it's on the edge here so I can know where to put my needle into the foundation chain so it'll also be on the edge. So like I mentioned before, it will seem like what we're about to do is pick up just like one of these free loops here, but what I really want to do is pick up two. So it kind of goes in between that first round of stitches to pick up two loops of the foundation chain. Like that, and usually for the first stitch, I'll work two in the same space. So in the next stitch, here I'll pick up one whole stitch, and then up here in the foundation chain, I make sure I pick up two loops of yarn, and just pull up. And I do that all the way around. Just tie off and weave in this end. So you can keep going and making all your chain lengths. This is actually turning out a bit bulkier than my reference scarf. So rather than making it long enough to wrap around myself three times, I'm only going to wrap it around two times, so it won't be quite as long as that scarf. So you can decide how many wraps you want. You might only want one, and it makes a really cute collar. That's totally up to you. So I'm gonna keep going. I'm not quite there yet. And I'll come back when we're about to finish up. My scarf is at a length now where I want to close up the ends. If you were curious about this yarn, it's um, from a company called Knit Collage, and I buy it at my local yarn store. It's kind of spendy, so I only made one link out of it, but it's super sparkly and cute, and I just wanted to stick a little bit of that yarn in my project. So try this on yourself, and if it's a length that you like, you can make one more chain link, and then this seems pretty obvious, but in case you wanted to see me do it, you just take your last link and slip it through the two ends of your scarves 
and then sew this last piece together. Oops. And now my entire chain link scarf is finished. This is what my finished chain link scarf looks like on. It's actually a bit more stiff and structural than I thought it would be. If you want your scarf to be less dense, you can try using an even taller stitch, like half triple or triple. Or if you're a little more advanced, you can try alternating your double crochets with chains and that'll open up the material a little bit more but I like the look of it and I think it's cool if you don't arrange your links like in a super organized color way then you can sort of see different colors depending on how you position it so I think that's pretty cool too. The fact that it's so structural makes my pigtails do something funky but that's fine. I would love to see your chain link scarves if you guys end up making any. If you post to social media don't forget to tag me. Twinkie Chan so I can see. I hope you guys have a fabulous weekend. If you have any suggestions or requests for future tutorials, just leave me a comment below or on Twitter or Instagram or Facebook or whatever, and I will see you guys very soon. Bye! <laughs> you really want that in there? <laughs>